kind of have a different feel this year, as everything does this year. And we will not be lighting the candles together. That's true, like we normally do. Um, but next year, it will all be back. And we'll be completely back next year. So I appreciate you all coming. And uh, I want to tell you that uh, we have an angel tree back here in the foyer of our chapel, if you want to see somebody's angel, and take time and help somebody out. And then on uh, next Sunday, Christmas Sunday, we'll have our service at 10. And on Christmas Eve, fingers crossed, we're going to be having two services. Everything social distance, and all the rules follow. Uh, but, uh, you know, you're, you're welcome to come to those if you want. Okay, let us pray. Loving God, you have blessed us by sending Jesus into this world. We thank you for his birth, his life. We thank you for his resurrection. And we thank you that your spirit is with us even today. Bring us comfort and bring us hope. Through Christ we pray. Amen. city of David, 
a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which the Lord has made known unto us. And they came with haste, and they found Mary, and Joseph, and the babe, lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all that heard it wondered at these things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, as it was told unto them. In the reading of these words, may we hear the word of the Lord. Amen. Good afternoon, and thank you for coming. It will come as no surprise to anyone sitting here this afternoon that this holiday season is especially difficult to walk through. There are just too many instances of fear, loneliness, and grief to absorb. The sickness or loss of loved ones, the social isolation, the economic insecurity, the sorrow over the state of our nation and our world. It is no wonder that our spirits are bowed so low. In previous times of trouble, we might have been able to turn to our friends, our, our churches, and many, many others for support and consolation. But today, it is likely that they too are distracted by their own fears and grief. So while the holiday carol tells us that we need a little Christmas right this very moment, COVID and other circumstances make that very difficult to attain. With so many of our treasured Christmas traditions, preparations, and gatherings so beyond our reach, it is, it is no wonder that so many are feeling alone and especially blue this year. Our church has held blue Christmas services for several years now. This year's service seems especially necessary as so many of us are experiencing alienation from ourselves, others, and even from God. Recognizing this very real grief, we gather together today so that, in the presence of God and each other, we might acknowledge and grieve these feelings of loss and anxiety. Our blue Christmas service is a time to acknowledge and to share that sadness with others who understand. We can then offer those feelings and situations to God, ever hopeful of God's presence and healing as we journey toward Christmas. This intimate and holy gathering assures us that Notwithstanding our situation or our feelings, we are not alone in our sadness, as God has promised to remain close to the brokenhearted. As Jesus announced early in his ministry, he did not come to save the well. He came to claim the sorrowing, the abandoned, and the despairing. Thus he is at this very moment, most clearly in our midst. And perhaps 
if we can become very still, we may hear the invitation which Jesus directs to our hearts. Come to me, be with me. I came so that you might know abundant life. I will not abandon you no matter what. Yet while these words seem comforting, how might they temper today's real life, which presents so much evidence to the contrary? Can we really find peace in and for our world, our families, our own souls? Or is that just a quaint notion of people and Christmases long, long ago? I think not. Our God has made an everlasting promise to be with each of us, wherever we are, in high, joyous places, as well as in low, sorrowful places, and everywhere in between. In this time of pandemic, isolation, and loss, while our hearts may be heavy, and our sadness may sometimes seem overwhelming, these very real feelings are not the final word for those who believe in our God. While I was preparing for today's service, I heard a news report which referenced the anniversary of the tragic shootings at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newton, Connecticut. Eight years ago, on December 14, 2012, 20 sweet angels and six of their loving teachers were mercilessly gunned down by a crazed young shooter. As you may recall, the shootings took place on a Friday afternoon. Reverend Jared Doyle of the nearby St. Rose of Lima Church was responsible for preaching at the Sunday service just two days after the tragedy. The town and much of the nation was near inconsolable. Yet, I still remember being so comforted by reading portions of Father Doyle's sermon, which I looked up again this week. Amid this unspeakable tragedy, Father Doyle poignantly concluded his sermon by stating, as you leave from here, you will not remember what I said today and it will become unimportant, and that's all okay. But eventually, you will really hear deep down that word of God that will finally and ultimately bring peace and joy. That is the word by which we live. That is the word by which we hope. That is the word by which we love. Though the context in which Father Doyle spoke differs much from that of today, the fear, the pain, and the desperation of the mourners contain many similarities to our situation today. Many of us may also feel lost, frightened, and perhaps inconsolable when pondering our current plight. Yet, Emmanuel, which means God with us, journeys with us through all of life's peaks and valleys. Whatever we are feeling is acceptable to Jesus. We need not put on a brave face for the one who says, come to me. I will give you peace, my peace, the peace which passes all understanding. 
recalling the promises of the one who appeared in our midst, seemingly a mere helpless infant, yet the greatest comforter known to humanity, we can more peacefully await God's doing a new thing and restoring our souls in this time. So today, let us look forward to the manger as we await the coming of the Prince of Peace who reassures, comforts, and wipes the tears from our eyes yet again. May it be so. Amen. And now let us pray. Dearest Lord, we ask that you bestow your peace, direction, healing, and comfort on all your people. Please continue to aid our scientists and health professionals in their work and in their search for healing and cures. Please especially be with all of those who are sick or dying or mourning or who are feeling hopeless during this Christmas season. We now stop here for a moment of silence so that you may silently add your own intentions. Dearest Lord, may we and all for whom we pray know the true source of our comfort is in you, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Honestly and openly with each other. 
and to dare to hope in the midst of pain. The candle of love. This candle represents our love. The love we have given and the love we have received. The love that has been and has gone unacknowledged and unfelt. And the love that has been shared in times of joy and sorrow. Thank you. 